Okay. Um, <laughs> these are some high-level questions I'm getting today. Some complicated questions. Almost knocked my tower over. Okay. <laughs> this is not beginner. This is not a beginner question, but I'll do my best here. Uh, I'm not sure what your skill, skill level Arpan is, but uh, just for the beginners watching this, some of this. Some of this might go over your head, but I'll try and explain it simply. Um, so the question is, I wanted to ask, what are these use cases, use case classes exactly? I mean, what's the true purpose of using them with repositories and clean architecture? Um, so if I had to really like, there's a couple, there's a couple purposes. So... Let me try and break it down like this. So uh, two, two main purposes, in my opinion. So, uh, geez, I can't spell here. Two main purposes. So, uh, design phase. So, uh, I'll try and write some of this out. So, when you are building a new app or refactoring an old app, Use cases are essentially a represent, representation of what your app must do in order to work properly. These can be arrived at uh, through problem domain analysis. So we're talking user stories and problem statements. So let me link, I can't explain uh, problem domain analysis in too much detail because it's a little complicated. Uh, it just takes a while to explain. I'm going to paste an article into the chat which talks about this. So um, let me give you a practical example from the project I've been working on lately. So this is POS Trainer, and in the domain package, or the domain module, you will find, so this is a multi-module project, you will find three packages here, domain model, you might also, other people might call this entity, but the word entity is very confused in my opinion. Um, but we have these domain models. So this is just like a data container class which has no third-party frameworks. Then we have our repository interfaces, but not the implementations of the repository. So we have get alarms. Uh, we have an alarm repository, an alarm service, and it's supposed to do these particular things. Set an alarm, cancel alarm, dismiss alarm. And then we have these use cases here. So we're talking cancel alarm, delete alarm, dismiss alarm, get alarm. You get the point. Set alarm, uh, update or create alarm. All the things my app, my alarm app needs to do. So why is this called domain? Because... I actually wrote that domain layer before the back end and the front end. So I kind of think of the domain layer as like a middle module. It's between the back end and the front end. The presentation, domain, data. It's in the middle. And I wrote it by performing problem domain analysis. If you want to understand what I'm talking about here, there's, there's a good photo. Problem domain. That's a good one. Um, the way you do program problem domain analysis is you ask yourself, what does the program do? And yeah, go read that article if you're curious. So by so I literally like pen and paper or in notepad will write out, I'll do my problem domain analysis. Before I decide what database I want to use, before I decide what the user interface looks like, in this case, I'm refactoring an application, so I already kind of have some ideas about what the user interface looks like and so forth. So I go from problem domain analysis written down in plain English 
to building my use cases and my what I call a domain model. Sometimes people call this an entity. What do these things look like? So here's, okay, so what I'm, I just explained here is that I'm able to design what my application does and the data it needs to represent. So an alarm app represents an alarm in a high level abstract way. So that's the, what I was talking about here. So it helps my design process because I can reason about what the application will need to do and the data it will need to represent without writing any Android code, without writing any back-end code, without writing any front-end code. So if I was building a new application, I would start by building my domain layer. If you're doing single module, you can make like a domain package and put your use cases there. Uh, in this case, I'm building an application which needs to work with both iOS and Android. And the iOS app and the Android app will both talk to the domain layer module. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's one of the purposes. Then there's a second purpose. So this is... Um, <laughs> let me, since we're just quoting, quoting Uncle Bob left and right here. Coordinating... No, I can't use... Uh, I'll paraphrase Uncle Bob. Uh, so this is the runtime phase. So when the app is actually running, what does it do? Uh, it coordinates the, I hate this term, business logic of the uh, back end. So then we're thinking repositories. So instead of verbally explaining this too much, let me show you the code. So, um, now here's the thing. Sometimes the domain layer isn't really that useful in a single module, strictly app, strictly Android application. So let me see if, uh, what would be a good one? Yeah, delete alarm. So, um, if you're doing a simple application, so maybe like a note-taking app, and the calls to your repository are pretty simple, so we're just saying like repository.delete alarm. In this case, there's not actually a lot of benefit oops, to having a use case. Because as you can see here, all this use case does is it just basically provides an extra layer of abstraction over a repository, which should be an interface, which is generally abstract enough. So when I show you that, you might think, okay, well, what's the point then? Once you start to have more complicated business logic, I hate that term, that's when we start to see the benefit so let's look, for example, at a more complicated use case. So here we're, all we need to do in this use case is we're just saying delete an alarm from the repository. This interface is in the domain layer. So I can write all of this out without even coding the actual repository implementation, that which implements the repository. And I can test it. I wrote this domain layer using test-driven development. As you can see, you will find tests here. Not for the really simple ones, but for the more complicated ones. When we have more complicated uh, business logic, I, I can't think of a better term, but yeah, whatever. That's when we start to see the value of the use cases. Where's a, where's a good one? Um, this is a good one. Okay. So this is where use cases really start to shine at runtime. So now all of a sudden, we're not just making one call to one friggin' repository, but in this use case, let me talk you through it. So in our alarm application, I have to store an alarm in a database, and I have to tell the alarm manager to do things with that alarm. So when the user, let me just show you, 
when the user toggles an alarm here, you can see there's an on off switch. So I'm just going to hit on. Okay, so we've set an alarm. When the user does that, we call our, uh, let's say we're dismissing the alarm. So I hit it again and then it turns the alarm off. When that occurs, we need to not only tell the alarm manager, which is what is behind the alarm service, to cancel the alarm so that it doesn't go off. So not only are we telling the service to cancel the alarm, but if it successfully cancels the alarm, then we take that same alarm and we write it to the database, our repository, except we set is active to false. Is active is just whether the alarm is active or not. It's very simple. So this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say business logic, instead of trying to verbally define that term. But this is when a, a use cases really help you. Um, and I'll very often, I will write the steps out required in like an itemized list. And when I'm writing my tests, uh, so this is a test class, uh, I'll make sure I write out exactly what I want this thing to do and the different uh, paths it can potentially take. So what does that do for us? Uh, it basically allows us to take this logic, this business logic, out of our presenter or our front-end logic class. So whereas when I used to do, for example, model view presenter, uh, just pretend that this thing is a presenter, it's a logic class. When I used to do this, um, what I would have to do is I would have this thing talking directly to the repository. And then it would say to the rep repository, um, you know, dismiss the alarm. And then it would talk to the, sorry, it would say to the service, dismiss the alarm. It, it would basically handle the stuff that you see here, the stuff that I showed you. Uh, it would do all of this manually. The result of that is that my alarm or my uh, logic class, my presenter, my controller, whatever, was pretty complicated because it had to manage the backend logic as well. By having this sort of middle domain layer, which is very abstract, all I do is I say to this dependency provider, remember this is just a way to get a hold of use cases, I ask, so for example, when the user toggles an alarm, so on alarm toggled, uh, where is that function down here? Um, then we'll, so if the, uh, depending on the state of the switch, it'll either say if it's active, we want to set alarm. If it's uh, inactive, we want to cancel alarm or I mix that up other way around. So when we actually want to talk to the backend through the use case, I just ask the provider for a use case. I give it the data it needs. And then I just have one single result to check. Did it work properly? Did it not work properly? instead of in the same class having this logic here, having to check did the service work properly, did the repository, did the database actually write to the database. Why? The front-end logic class, the front-end decision maker, should not care about those things. You should pull as much of that business logic out of the front-end logic, separation of concerns, Front-end, presentation logic, business logic, pull them out. And that's basically the point of and benefit of use cases. So hopefully that was a relatively <laughs> decent explanation. This is not beginner material, but that's kind of the main things. Uh, so runtime, it can allow you to um, abstract out presentation logic from business logic. Um, and this will simplify simplify your presenters, your view models, your um, controllers, your logic classes, whatever. It'll simplify them. But again, just understand if you don't actually have like multiple backend, if you just had a database and that's all you're talking to, like for example, in uh, 
this one, delete alarm, all we're doing is we're just deleting an alarm from the repository. In this case, if that's, um, if you're only ever talking to one repository interface, you can actually just skip the use cases entirely and just have your logic class, your presenter, your controller, whatever, just have it talk directly to the repository interface if we're just calling single functions. So um, don't necessarily, you, you don't have to use use cases anywhere and everywhere. Um, there's one final benefit. Uh, this is more a benefit of the, uh, so this is a um, benefit of domain layer in general. Um, it allows you to have uh, a neutral, neutral meaning um, almost, yeah, I would say platform independent source of truth for multi -plat platform applications. So this is only a benefit if you're actually planning on building multi-platform applications. Uh, but we could have, um, uh, so for example, as I discussed earlier in the show, um, currently I have one, two, three, four modules. We've got Android data, Android app, and then I will also have, I'll also have iOS app, iOS data, and what I want you to notice is if I pull up the build.gradle files for these different things, so here we have app, and then we have Android data. I just want you to notice both the Android data depends on common and domain. Just ignore common for now. It's just stuff that is shared across everywhere. But notice how it depends on domain, and then app also depends on domain. Uh, I don't think I need to have it depending on Android data, so I'll have to check on that. Oh, I do in the service locator, actually. So, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, that's basically... Uh, I could probably abstract that out if I really wanted to. But, yeah, it, it provides a common neutral ground. So if I had my iOS module written in Kotlin native, then you would also see implementation project domain, and it would use it would make use of the same uh, repository interface and the same primary entity or, or domain model. And uh, so that allows code reuse and abstraction and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that answers your question.